All right, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Metaverse Bible Study Podcast on YouTube. This is podcast episode 15, What Comes to Us All. I am your host, Bishop D.D. Lattimore, and thank you for being a part of the podcast today. Um, we're, we dive into timeless biblical wisdom and stoic philosophy and I'm honored to be your guide on this spiritual journey. In each episode, we'll explore the rich tapestries of lessons, meditations, and reflections that have shaped many cultures and inspired many hearts throughout the centuries. Whether you're a pastor or a devout believer, or just simply curious about the profound teachings of the Bible, you found a home here. So if you need a friend, find a quiet, find a quiet moment, open up your heart, and join me as we uncover the profound insights and, and eternal truths woven in these ancient texts. This podcast is brought to you by BizExchange.network. Remember that your network determines your net worth. I joined BizExchange.network because I needed to increase my bottom line. This social media platform will surround you with people who can help you do just that. For a discount, use the promo code METAVERSE. And finally... Subscribe to the Metaverse Bible Study Podcast on YouTube. Everyone that becomes a subscriber shares God's light into a dying world right along with us. So let this light so shine before men on YouTube and subscribe today. And thank you. Uh, if you would like to give a $20 seed offering, you can give it via Cash App. Um, cash tag Power Praise. Cash tag power praise. All right, so let's get into today's meditation. You'll find us in December the 18th in the Daily Stoic. Um, the title is What Comes to Us All. What Comes to Us All. And um, before we talk about that, um, it had come to my attention that uh, Andre Brower died. And he was um, the African-American actor off of Brooklyn Nine-Nine, did a lot of different things. And when that came back to my memory, um, this particular lesson or meditation became a little more prevalent just by the nature of what it says. So let's get into it and um, see what it says. And let's uncover these things together. Marcus really says in meditations six to four. Oh yeah. Um, I would like to thank, um, the people who are listening to us in Africa. Uh, I just found out that we have a little community that listens to us in Africa and definitely grateful that you guys tune into the podcast every week. Um, this is what Marcus Aurelius said, both Alexander the great and his mule keeper, were brought to the same place by death. They were either received into the all generative reason or scattered among the atoms. 
let's read that again. Both Alexander the Great and his mule keeper were brought to the same place by death. The, the Bible kind of says it uh, uh, the same way, um, in a different way. It says that um, that the heavens and the, there should be a new heaven and a new earth, and um, there should be no more sea. And the and the sea that was gave up is dead. Both small and great came up to be judged. And the truth of the matter is, is that no matter what you do in this life, you're all ever, whether you're you're highly exalted or whether you've you know not, not been celebrated like a celebrity, it doesn't matter what you do. You're you're all coming to the same place by death. Small or great, rich or poor, bond or free. Marcus Aurelius said they were either received into the all generative reason or scattered among the atoms. Let's get into the commentary. Give me a second. I can't seem to uh, pull it up here. Oh, that's not it. Hmm. There we go. I don't know what was going on. Here we go. <laughs> All right. So it says in a world that is in many ways becoming more and more unequal, there aren't many truly equal um, equalitarian experiences left. When Benjamin Franklin observed that in this world, nothing can be said to be certain except death and taxes, he, could, he couldn't have known how good some people would be at avoiding taxes. But death, that's still one thing that everyone experiences. We all face the same end. Whether you conquer the known world or shine the shoes of the people who do, at the end, death will be a radical equalizer. A lesson in object humility which is a lesson in object humility. Shakespeare had Hamlet trace out the logic in the stark terms for both Alexander and Julius Caesar. It says, Imperious Caesar, dead and turned to clay, might stop a hole to keep the wind away. Oh, that, that earth which kept the world in awe should patch a wall to expel the winter flaw. The next time you feel yourself getting high and mighty or conversely feeling low and inferior, just remember we all end up the same way. In death, no one is better. No one is worse. All are stories have the same finale or finale. So um, that is a reminder that every, everybody shares the same end, the end in death. And this month is a month of mortality. So this month we're talking about our mortality. It's a bit morbid in December. I agree <laughs> to keep on talking about the same thing, but it is, um, it is, it is honestly refreshing to keep in mind that every day is a gift every day. Every day is a gift. And like we talked about during our cabin edition, that when you keep into your mind that every day is a gift, you treat it different. 
you treat it different. You treat it, you're, you're more grateful, you're more, you have more gratitude, um, you, you're not petty, you're not pretending. You know that if you knew that today was it, your whole mentality would be different. And that is, again, the point that Marcus Aurelius is saying, because what, pe what happens is people get so caught up in what they were able to accomplish in this life. And what, they, and what they weren't able to accomplish in this life. And they get so caught up in the superheroes of the Bible, like King David and, and the prophets and all that different kind of stuff. And, and everybody wants these mountaintop experiences. But at the end of the day, every mountaintop, every mountain has a valley. Every high place has a low place adjacent. And we all are going to meet in the valley of the dry bones. <laughs> We're all going to meet in that place is what Ryan Holiday says is the great equalizer. Andre Brower, he was able to achieve some amazing things in his life in acting and on television. But whether it's, you know, him or whether it's, you know, some obscure God forbid, 10 year old that got hit by a stray bullet. They all meet the grave and the world continues and their names are typically forgotten out of the daily conversations of their spears, spears and peers. So don't take everything in this life so hard. Don't allow it to get you down to the point where you become depressed because you're trying to keep up with the Joneses. Keeping up with the Joneses is not healthy for your emotions, your mental health, any of that. Like we said in the cabin, you have to live your best life. And there's only one you. And if you spend your time trying to copy somebody else, you are depriving the world of what makes you you. And they are not able to see all of what you are because you are hiding it. And they might need that, whatever that is, whatever that is. Whatever that, that, that unique, special thing that you have that makes you idiosyncratic to yourself, right? That is the thing that people need to see. And that's the thing that a lot of us tried to hide. But it is paramount, honestly, for if when you show that thing to the world, and it, whether it is celebrated or whether it is ignored, whether it disappears when you disappear. At the end of the day, other people like Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson had a great gift. But at the same, he had, he had millions and millions and billions of fans across the world. But when he died. He came to the same end as somebody who was not as celebrated. And that's why Marcus Aurelius was reminding himself that both Alexander the Great and his mule keeper, the person that kept his mule, his, his donkey, they were both brought to the same place by death. So why are you investing your emotions? Why are you investing your mental energies into results that you cannot control and being depressed or being, you know, suppressed, oppressed because you're investing your time and your emotions into stuff that you can't control. Who cares if you're not celebrated? Who cares if you're not famous? What does that mean anyway? Who cares if, you know, a thousand people don't show up to your funeral? The world keeps moving on. Death keeps taking those. 
ones that was ordained year by year, day by day, second by second. And everything just continues as it once was. So why get caught up on it? Why get caught up on it? You are not the center of the universe. And you trying to make yourself and force yourself to be the center of the universe, the prophet, the king, the queen. You're doing a lot of pushing. You're doing a lot of manipulating. To what end? A lot of people like to think that they're doing it because of legacy. They want to leave legacy. They want to they want to build something that will outlive me is what the place Hamilton said. He said, what do you want, Burr? What do you want, Burr? If you stand for nothing, then what will you fall for? OK, you built it. We still know your name to this day. But guess what? You're still dead. You don't know what we're saying about you. We we and you don't know how your monument has held up over time. And you are mostly forgotten. So your ambition has not done anything really significant. Not unless you do it for the kingdom. Because only what you do for Christ will last, right? So, why are we investing our emotions into what the world thinks about us? How about we invest our emotions into what God thinks about us? And how do you have a better favorable opinion about what God thinks about you? You seek him. One thing have I desired from the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I might dwell in in the house of the Lord forever. When thou sayest unto me, seek ye my face, my heart saith unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. (laughs) Right? For us who are believers in Christ, that's all that matters. And the example that he left for us was one who died as a thief, as a robber. They put king of the Jews over his cross to mock him. Honestly, I think that some people think that they have to be celebrated by the world in order to have significance in this life. But this person's death, we're talking about Christ, his his death, he wasn't even known in the world until many years after he died. He was just known in the regions that he was known in. He was a, he was a regional celebrity, a local, a local celebrity. But it wasn't until after his death that his story changed lives. So you don't know what, if your life didn't do it, you don't know what your death might do. And you have all of your emotions into your life when you don't know what what your death or the impact of your death Maybe. And I think that that's important. That's another important um, reason not to invest your emotions into the results of of your life. You are not a failure because you didn't make a million dollars in this life. You are not a failure because, you know, you don't have your own house in a hill somewhere secluded from everybody else or that you don't live in a compound because you got so much money a lot of people that have fame they actually want to give it away they wish they didn't have fame and then the people who became was was famous and they became regular citizens and people don't really recognize them like that they said i'd rather it be like that i don't want to go back to being famous it was terrible it was a terrible experience you know, oftentimes, like I was just listening to this guy, he said he bought a $4 million house 
and hated it because pipes were breaking all the time. People were in and out of the house, strangers. He was paying for gardeners every day, paying for this and paying for that. The upkeep of the house was its own burden. I remember uh, 50 Cent, he was saying like, um, um, he bought Mike Tyson's house and he was spending like, uh, what is it? $75,000 a month just to upkeep the house? Somewhere around there. So, getting, you know, keeping up with the Joneses and trying to make it look like, you know, you're so such and much. It's not really when you actually get to that top of that mountain, it's, it's, it's a pretty lonely place. And it's not what you expected and you got there kudos to you but when you come down there's nothing else to see but the grave right and we are all going to meet that grave unless Christ comes back and we're translated up out of here and that's what uh, I think it was either Seneca or Marcus Release was talking about um, last in a couple episodes ago, he said, whether you've seen 40 years or you've seen 80, it's just going to be the same stuff. <laughs> like people are, you know, we're, we're doing things to actually live longer and all that different kind of stuff. But, you know, Paul, his his mentality when it came to death was 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 something that we don't see much today. Right. Paul was like, I don't know whether I want to, you know, go and be with the Lord or stay with you because I'm going to be productive either way in my life. I'm going to be doing this. And in my death, I'm going to be doing that. And, and, you know, some people are trying to hold on to their life with, you know, all diligence. Like they're trying to, you know, everybody wants to go to heaven, but they don't want to die. Right. So, but this is a whole different mentality. You've been given a certain amount of time. You're going to do what you were ordained to do in that certain amount of time. The providence of God is going to bring you to an expected end. I know the thoughts that I have toward you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you to an expected end, right? He knows where he's going to bring you. And when he does what he wants to do in your life, he's a wonderful, God is a wonderful manager. He doesn't want anything to stay longer than it should. He manages the earth. That's why the scripture says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. They that dwell therein. He manages us, man. He manages our effectivity, our effectiveness. He, he manages our influence. He manages our trajectory. He is in control. Somebody touch your neighbor and say, God is in control. You're working hard. You're working hard. You're working hard. You're so ambitious. Don't you realize that God is in control? He's in control of every aspect of your life. And he's also in control of when you die. And when it's time for you, him to move on from your story. So what Marcus Aurelius and what Ryan Holiday is trying to remind us is that death is the great equalizer. Right. Whether you are Julius Caesar or whether you are. Um or Alexander um, the, the Great, or the, or the person that, you know, took care of his horses or mules. He said, the next time you feel yourself getting high and mighty, or conversely, the next time you feel yourself getting low and inferior, just remember, we all end up in the same way. In death, no one is better, no one is worse, 
all our stories have the same finale. And that you can bet your bottom dollar. All right, let's pray about it. And let's get on out of here. You'll find me in um, Psalms, the 28th chapter. Okay. And it says, Blessed be the Lord, because he hath heard the voice of my supplications. Shema Israel Yahweh Eloheinu Yahweh Eha. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. We thank you for waking us up this morning. We thank you for uh, starting us on our day. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for who you are and what you've done. We thank you for being our God. We call you by your name, Yeshua. We thank you for being a very present help in the time of trouble. And we thank you for blessing us enough to hear your hear our voice in our, in our supplications. We thank you that you're a God that hears us when we cry. We only have a little bit a little bit of time on this earth. Solomon said that we're like a vapor of smoke. We're here today and we're gone tomorrow, right? Things are going to happen. Things are going to line up. That's going to bring us to our peaks and bring us to our valleys. But in the meantime, you hear our supplications. You hear our voice and you care about what's going on with us. It says, the Lord is my strength and he's my shield. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. I ask you in the name of Yeshua, the Messiah, God, that you remember those who need help. It's tough out here. It's tough. It's doggy dog out here. The world is dying out here. Even your saints who's trying everything that they can to please you. Is struggling in these streets. But we are helped by you. Our God, who is rich in mercy, my God shall supply all of our needs according to his riches and mercy in Christ. And we are helped. And you are our shield. And because you've helped us so many times before, that's why we trust in you. And we believe in you. You are very real to us. And you are our strength. And you are our shield. And therefore, our hearts greatly rejoice. Because of who you are in our lives. And with my song, I will praise you. I ask you that you give somebody a new song today. I ask you that you allow it to resonate in their spirit, in their hearts to give them joy in a place where other people would not have joy. They might be suffering financially, but don't let it take their joy. Somebody under the sound of my voice might be struggling in their relationships, but don't let it take their joy. Suffering in their bodies but don't let it take their joy and give us a song that'll get us through. The Lord is their strength. Thank you for being our strength, God. And he is the saving strength of his anointed. Save each and every one that calleth on you. For the Bible says that if we call on you, the same shall be saved. Save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Feed them also and lift them up forever. And we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. 
We might not understand your decisions and your will, but not our will, but thine we be done. We might not understand why you have allowed certain things to happen and transpire. But we don't need to understand everything. I don't have to understand the decisions of somebody that I trust. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. And you have called us friend. And today we show you our trust. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen and amen. All right, everybody, that is it for today. We thank you for being on the podcast. Thank you for our um, our Africa audience. We thank you so much for joining us. Um, thank you for um, being a participant uh, participant participants in uh, in the podcast. We would like everybody uh, to go onto YouTube and to subscribe today to the Metaverse Bible Study podcast on YouTube and just type in Metaverse Bible Study and we'll pop right on up. Um, we are trying to get our subscriptions up. Our subscriptions has gone up from 321 to 323 and I haven't posted a, another video since the last time we went up to 321. So our subscriptions are steadily going up slowly, but surely. But we're going to, you know, keep on uh, putting out content out there that um, shares God's light in an interesting way. We ask you that you help us become the number one Bible channel on YouTube. And um, so that we can do some some real good into this world um, with our content. And that is it. And we'll see you next time. Have a blessed day.